says that just because a senator is convicted of a felony, that they cannot serve in the Senate. Now, past precedent shows that all of the other people who have been indicted have either stepped down or their term has lapsed. But certainly more than 30 Democratic senators, his own colleagues here on the Hill, have called for him to step down, saying that he's lost the trust of the public, even as they said that the courts should work their will and that he should be innocent until now, of course, proven guilty. The way this impacts the calculation, of course, is what we're going to be tracking quickly because it's probably going to reignite those 30 Senate Democrats who have called for him to resign already. But notably, we haven't heard from the top Senate Democrat, Chuck Schumer, on this. The majority leader has been mum, of course, in the meantime. We have seen on the political side, Menendez no longer running for re-election as a Democrat. Instead, mm -hmm. he has a challenger there. He's running as an independent, at least for now. And our understanding, Laura, was that sources close to him said if this was a hung jury or if he were found innocent, he would continue in that run. Of course, that tracks with the defiant posture that we have seen him take in over the course of the last few weeks and months that this has gone on. But just in the last few minutes, we are now hearing from Andy Kim, the congressman from New Jersey, who is challenging Menendez for that Senate seat. His statement reads in part that this is a sad and somber day for New Jersey and our country. He then says, I called for Senator Menendez to step down when these charges were first made public. And now that he's been found guilty, I believe the only course of action for him is to resign his seat immediately. The people of New Jersey deserve better. We have also seen his fellow New Jersey colleagues, Cory Booker, come forward in the past few weeks and months and say that Menendez right. should step down. Of course, all of this likely to be reignited here on Capitol Hill now that this verdict has actually come down. Yeah, the verdict obviously very different than the charges itself. Appreciate Absolutely. it, Ali. I want to bring in NBC's News legal analyst, Danny Savalas. Danny, let's talk about potential avenues for appeal. But before I do that, I just want to bring folks up to speed. We have 16 counts guilty across the board here. His attorney's upset. We're getting this reporting from in the courtroom. His family wiping tears from their eyes. The clerk reading the jury uh, the verdict back. Um, the judge telling them essentially their, their job is now done um, and thanking them for for their service. What potential avenues, Danny, does he have for an appeal? It would obviously be an uphill battle, and he is facing serious prison time here if it doesn't work. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about how the Supreme Court, in a case not too long ago, made it harder for federal prosecutors to prove corruption cases. But at the same time, in 2023 alone, uh, the Department of Justice reported some over 300 new bribery and, and uh, corruption convictions. So DOJ is still prosecuting these cases, and DOJ is still having a lot of success here. It's not a big surprise that he was found guilty on all counts. I've defended these bribery and corruption cases. They are really difficult to defend, no matter what the Supreme Court has said recently or before that. And the defense is usually the same thing, because it's the only thing left to your defense attorneys, which is the government's put on all this evidence of gifts coming to the official, and the government's put on evidence of things the official did to benefit that person who gave the gifts. And the defense is usually left with the only arrow in the quiver, which is there's no formal written agreement of this quid pro quo. But the jury can infer the existence of that this for that arrangement. And they do make that inference because it's just too hard to argue that an official got this many goodies and gifts and that he just happened to separately and without consideration of those gifts do something that incredibly benefited the giver of those gifts or that person's friends. And the law allows to consider the benefits that go to a friend. It doesn't directly have to be to the person who handed over the gold bars or the sports cars. And in the meantime, Danny, do you think the judge will allow him to stay out of, of prison on bail? He's not going to be taken into custody. Right. So. From at this point, after conviction, the judge sets a sentencing date, and usually they continue the terms of pretrial release. So I would expect that because Menendez was out, he didn't have any problems prior to trial while he was out that I'm aware of, that he would be allowed to continue that. And then even at sentencing, once the sentence is imposed in federal court, they often get a turn-in date, which might be several weeks out from the actual sentencing. They may not take him into the side door and start a sentence immediately, although it happens. In all likelihood, he'll get a turn-in date. 
And then from there, his attorneys may argue or ask for a stay of his sentence pending appeal. But the challenge there is that those usually involve two factors. Number one, there has to be an issue for appeal that's interesting or likely to result in an overturning of the conviction. And secondly, the sentence itself can't be too long. Now, we don't know what that sentence is yet. Right. The problem with financial crimes is that the dollar amount of loss often boosts that sentence into the stratosphere, which makes it less likely that he would be successful to get in getting a stay of his sentence pending appeal. Danny, just quickly while I have you, do you think this changes the calculation for Nadine Menendez, who's obviously facing her own charges? Do you think she now takes a plea? Uh, most statistically, I would just be going with the numbers in saying that most federal criminal defendants take guilty pleas. And by most, I mean over 90 percent. And those that choose to go to trial, over 90 percent are convicted. So I would expect that Nadine's attorneys are probably having a facts of life discussion with her about the landscape now. And by the way, one of the other things that could happen theoretically is some of these defendants could decide to cooperate after the verdict to try and help their sentence, which makes life even worse for Nadine. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.